Wake Dream is a sailing boat that I have built out of this old steel cooling tower. My original dream was to sail her around the world, but time and money have always been against me. However, even after all these years, I have not given up, and I continue to try and keep the dream alive. Currently, I am completing a major refit and doing a few modifications that have seen me tear her apart and put her all back together again. The job is a bit difficult as the boat is in France and I live in the UK trying to survive the joy that is Brexit and the whole modern life thing. In this video I am building the new keel in my garage here in the UK. Once complete I will take it to France and hope that it fits. This is where I begin uh, working on the keel. So I've got my keel base plate there um, and I've got my bits of steel all ready and I have to start constructing this thing. So I had to cover up my bike and uh, prepare my workspace and this is the first bulkheads of the keel. This is all stainless steel uh, welded onto the steel base plate, the Nacarera foam that's in the bottom there. So these are stainless steel bulkheads because they will also form part of the water tank. And also it means I don't have to paint them and stainless steel used a structural bulkhead, it works quite well. So, I immediately stuck it onto that square piece of bar that's on the bottom there, that's a nice thick bit of bar there, and started cutting the side panels. I found that they, they fell onto the framework quite nicely actually, there wasn't really any need to um, pre-bend them or anything, which was uh, quite a nice surprise. So the side panels are about 4.25 meters long I think it was. Um, so I've used 2.5 meter steel sheets, so I've only got one joint in them, and I'm trying to keep the welding fairly to a minimum, you know, because obviously less joints, less distortion, uh, less welding, less cost, less risk of leaks. I have to say I've never really had any leaks, I think ever. Um, and what I do to try and make sure I never have any leaks is I put a nice root weld in, and then I grind back into it a little bit, and then I put my cap over the top and I tried to stagger the joints. So if I've done a route that's like six inches long, then what I try and do is I try and start the cap halfway along so that there's no joint in the same place and the route and the cap at the same time. And that, you know, just, it makes it all really nice, homogeneous sort of nice weld line. At the start of the weld, the heat obviously is building. And while it's building, it's not penetrating deep into the steel. So what I like to do when I, after I've done a run is I like to grind into the start of the, or the end of the previous weld and where I'm going to grind a weld into the start of the next weld so that I have a nice run in through steel that I know had good penetration and was a good base material to weld into. So I will typically top and tail each weld and run a little groove back into it. So now I'm going to put some bits of channel on the bottom of the keel. This is essentially the bottom bit of the boat that will contact with the concrete blocks when she's on the side and should I run into something this will be the bit that hits the rock. So it needs to be nice and strong. It's, uh, I seem to remember I got 4mm box and um, or rectangular section and cut it down to make this shape. Um, there's going to be extra bits going on shortly but this is the this is the very base of the kill going on here. One thing I'm trying to do here as well is I'm trying to weld each side um, in tandem just to try and make sure that the distortion is reduced and if it is there it's in equal measure on each side. With the base bit now welded on it's really coming together and becoming a lot more stiffer. The scouring of the steel plate I've done there with the grinder is because it's cold rolled steel plate and um, there's no mill skill on it but I need to create a key for the paint to stick into. Here I'm cutting the base bits for the keel and um, what I'm trying to explain in this particular clip here is that the plasma cutter is a bit like a MIG welder in that you have an earth clamp going to the piece of work and then you have the gun there which puts in a, a large amount of electricity um, and then instead of injecting the wire um, through to weld it together, you inject compressed air. And the compressed air just forces the melting steel out, creating the cut. It's a really cool system. I'm, I've used oxacetylene before and a lot, and 
this is just so much easier to use. Now with the plasma cutting done, obviously you shake around a little bit, you don't get quite get a nice straight line. Also the compressed air has forced the metal out and sometimes it leaves a bit of slag, but you can usually just hammer off and it's actually a really satisfying thing to get a little hammer and just chip off that slag. But then obviously you have to grind it nice and flat, which is what I'm going to explain now. With my wavy line, I tend to grind on this side, then on that side, and then because the grinder naturally sort of does more on the bits that are stuck out in the waves, then when you go like this, it makes it straighter, quicker. Just like a wave. Grind here, grind here, and then it will naturally, when you go down this end, it will naturally find it easier to take the lumps off. So my keel is going to look something like this, and the boat's up here. So I've stuck this piece of skeg material here, right? But obviously that's on a flat piece of three millimeter. So this is all three millimeter round here, and I'll put the blocks here, and all the weight of the boat will sit on here. Obviously this isn't strong enough. So internally, I'm going to put some cross braces at logical points like the bulkheads to spread, make this strong and spread the weight through this 3mm stuff here and through the bulkheads. But also, I'm going to put these pieces on the side here to form a nice triangular sort of reinforced section. So this will make the bottom skeg really strong. Then obviously three millimeter isn't enough. So you're gonna have the bulkheads and on a key point, I'm gonna have a couple of bits of box that go up to the bottom of the boat. So this is a standard welding mask with the auto dimming. But um, here you've got a grinder setting. So I can set it there and I can use it for grinding and I can use it for plasma cutting on that setting because it's Still fit, dark enough for plasma cutting, as long as you don't look at the plasma too much. Um, but it, all the grinding dust falls off of here, whereas if you use the normal goggles like these, the grinding dust sits here, sits around your forehead, you take them off and it drops in your eyes. So when I use these, I'm always getting bits in the eyes. If I use this, despite the fact that it's all open around here, don't have any problems. So anyhow, I have to turn it off the grinder setting, stick it up to about 12 on here, and that's pretty good. <coughs> I'm ill at the moment as well. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld this on the first piece and then pull it around as I weld. Just got to grind it, finish fitting it, weld it. But before I do that, I'd better cut the other side because it's always good to run them in pairs. You get distortion this side, distortion that side. So I'll run similar welds to what I've done here before I weld this anymore. Then I'll keep on sighting it down the edge like this. And I can see that it's out here. It's good. Then I've got to put my wheels on. I'm going to put my wheels on about here and down the back there. Because this thing's going to weigh about 160 kilograms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these big industrial wheels, well, cheap industrial wheels on it. Lift it up, turn it over. Um, it's going to be fun, all on my own. But that's fairly easy to do. I'll just lift one end at a time and then I'll. At the moment it's only about 100 kilos if that. 
and now flip it over onto its wheels, fit out the inside, and then with its wheels I'll be able to load it onto the trailer, and I'll be able to take it over to France, unload it out of the trailer, roll it underneath the boat, jack it up, test it, pull it away, grind it, clean it, put it back, test it, and a couple of times because it'll be on the wheels, and then well done. So I'm just welding the wheels on quick. These are pretty good little wheels. They're about four or five pound each, I think it was, and they support I think it was about 120 or 150 kilogram each, but it's plenty enough for this keel because I say it's going to be about 160, 180 kilograms, and uh, yeah, this should, this should do pretty good. So the next job was to turn her the right way up and uh, start working on the internals, like the water tanks. But that's for the next video. So thanks very much for watching. Thanks. Bye.